folks, you may have heard the CEO of Hemlane, Dana Dunford, talk about how she was had 100% of the company funds at Silicon Valley Bank and what she did Thursday mon- morning to get out of it. Now we're going to talk with Dustin, the CEO of Convoy, and see what's going on with Convoy Mortgage, Silicon Valley Bank. It seems to have tentacles everywhere. What's going on, Dustin? Uh, not too much. How are you doing, Mike? Hi, man. I'm just curious. Does Convoy uh, have any direct relationship, perhaps, with Silicon Valley Bank? Or if not, maybe that community around it, uh, maybe you saw some impact or maybe some phone calls on Thursday because it got wild in the Silicon Valley last week. Yeah, I mean, f- knock on wood, we had no direct uh, interaction with SVB. Um, some of the other players that you guys are seeing on on uh, on the headlines as who would be next, we do have direct um you know, communication and banking relationships with not only banking our own money, but actually using those funds to lend out uh, mm-hmm. to clients that we work with that. The, the biggest thing that we saw the, the indirect impact was, was we had a lot of clients that required some sort of depository relationship with one of those banks that were down 30, 40, 50, 60 percent. Right. Right. And cl- calling us saying, Hey, we got a loan. I don't want our money there. What happens if I pull my money out? Is the lender going to call our note due? Is my relationship moving forward going to be dampened? And what we've seen is those banks that gave our private clients, you know, a rate that was at, let's say four and a quarter, two months ago when everyone else was getting 6%, they're all based on relationships. So it is individual. If they see that during this time you pulled out 600 K that you were required to put in or a million, they're going to remember that. And they made it clear behind scenes. But what's funny is all of the messages that they send, all of the newsletters and emails saying, we're great. Our liquidity is fine. We're not exposed to VCs, you know, uh, ventures like we're all good. That is just what they're putting on in the front of everybody. But behind scenes, it's not like that. They're like, you touch this money, you're done. Yeah. Like, well, it's funny. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank uh, CEO, right? New CEO has been in the job three days or two days or whatever it's been. Um, he's now talking about aggressively going after what's called the exclusivity contract, right? Yeah. At Silicon Valley Bank, one of the reasons, Silicon, one of the reasons tech companies have all their money at Silicon Valley Bank, is because of two things. One, there's this thing called venture debt, and what Silicon Valley Bank did to secure all of that is they gave remarkable rates on venture debt. Again, it's like a it's like a credit line to the average person. Yeah. Rainy day fund, if you will. And but in that, when you if you took it, you sign an exclusivity contract, which means you have to have your money there. As we know, last Thursday, forty two billion dollars left the system. A lot of that was under exclusivity. Now, the new CEO, as of I think it was Tuesday, I read this is having phone calls with past clients saying, hey, we're open for business. All is good. We welcome you back. And basically the. Read, uh, reading between the lines is if you don't come back, we're calling the note because that is in the contract. So, yeah, these, these uh, banking relationships are real. And uh, I don't expect Silicon Valley Bank to go quietly. I, I expect them to use their exclusivity contract. Does that, does that feel again? You have no direct relationship. Does that feel like a uh, what the bank might do? I, I feel that because I'm being told that with other banks in the same line. <laughs> you're being, you're being told that down. specifically. Yeah. There's no between the lines. Uh, no, unfortunately, th- that's and that's the game you play when you when you're one of those that are, let's just say, private client that's getting those types of rates. Yeah. There are going to be the small print, you know, things that you don't even know that you're signing to. And now we're seeing that really come to reality. Yeah. So uh, the other thing. Uh, that I want to play with is, and again, we may just do one long video together because I got all these rambling thoughts going on in my head is I, I expect there to be a significant drop in loan value, loan volume, maybe even value in the commercial or the regional banks. I read something the other day. If it's right or wrong, please let me know. But roughly speaking in 2022, regional banks were responsible for 50% of the loan volume. And certainly in the commercial space. So if all of that is true and regional banks are going to, you've got to imagine regional banks are going to get more conservative. Got to imagine. For sure. Um, 
the lending box is going to get tighter. Rates are going to go up. It kind of feels like that's where we're headed. What do you think? Yeah, I think, well, the, the regional banks, you know, keep in mind a, a lot of them are going to be changing as a result of this past four or five, you know, business days. Like you said, their loan to values are going to shrink significantly. You may have been getting 75 two weeks ago. Now you're going to get 65. Um, the lending, even though I think rates are going to come down for the next month or two, I still think we're on an upward trend, which we can talk about later. Um, you're going to see lending still get harder. Uh, the amount exactly. of rates are going to go need, down, but it's going to get harder. Yes, exactly. It, it's a, it's a weird time that not a lot of people I think have experienced where it's like, oh, rates are down. Well, hey, you used party to on, baby, months. party. Yeah, no. but. Now you need 24 months of reserves or you need to have, you know, let's say th this is a strange one. We'll, we can also talk about this because I've got a lot of rambling thoughts and all the moving guidelines and whatnot yeah. that we're seeing. Um, so if, if the property is vacant or if uh, it's in a declining market, like two days ago, this used to be a 5% hit. Okay. Now with one of our best and most used funds, it's a 10% hit on the loan to value. Yeah. But what's confusing is that same fund decided that, hey, we used to only max out to 75%. Now we're doing 80%. So they, they're kind of picking and going choosing. Going up and going back. Yeah. Yeah. Like the qualifications, I, I'm still, I would think that everything is going to go to making it harder, but it seems like they're going to be picking which box per se they want to make more difficult and and penalize you know the client yeah. versus yeah. which box they're going to actually reward you on yeah one of the things that i've said and I'm, I'm glad i have receipts i think i just said it this morning um i, I and i'll actually do it right here just in case people didn't see my daily financial news i think commercial lending is going to get ridiculously hard right uh, commercial refis commercial cash out hard 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 residential investments one through four, it's going to get hard and more expensive, but not impossible. I actually think one of the boxes that will win out of this is residential first-time home buyers. Oh, yeah. Because, because there's a ready buyer called Fannie and Freddie, baby. Let's shove the loans that way. That's what I think yeah. is going to happen. I, I mean, I agree. And what's funny, I'm sure you probably brought this up with one of your other experts, like that loan level pricing adjustment, right? That they were supposed to roll out is getting pushed back three months. If that. You have. Yeah. Uh, you know, basically if your DTI, your debt to income is above 40 or 45, you were going to get hit pretty significantly with the price. They kicked that can can down the road three months. And it's just another kind of indicator of what they did with mortgage insurance being cut in half uh two weeks ago or three weeks ago. My opinion probably aligns with a lot of people in this space. It's gonna be the primary first time home buyer, owner occupied, whatever it may be, if it's your primary residence, yeah. that's who they're going to focus on. You know, Fannie and Freddie, they're Absolutely. going to do everything they can to help those guys. On the contrary, why are they doing that? Because they're going to do everything they can to make it very difficult for non-owner occupied, you know, yeah. investment, second home, anything. So yeah. I, I think it's... you're, you know, right in line. Yeah. And again, that's, that's, um, if, I keep reminding people there's two markets. If you're in this business for any length of time, there's a real estate market, which everybody looks at, but there's a lending market and the lending market leads the real estate market. Right. I, one of the guys I talked with on, um, on Thursday. So about a couple hours before we talk is a syndicator. And he's like, Michael, the market's frozen. Buyers and sellers aren't agreeing, but sellers who have bridge debt, variable rate terms that are coming up on their lockout or lock, whatever it's called, their, their uh, refi period. They're going to take some massive haircuts. Cap oh, yeah. rates are up, it's, you know, assumptions are down. So uh, there is some pain coming in the commercial market. And I think that's something that not enough people are talking about is the, the kind of pain for the last two years of unrealistic assumptions is coming due in commercial because the debt resets. Single owner occupied loans are 30 year fixed. If you got a loan, there's no clause that says, Hey, if the value falls 10%, I'm calling the loan. But there yeah. are things like that in commercial. Yeah, no. And, and I'm not going to be the expert here on this channel to say that I'm the commercial lender broker expert. Oh. 
we do have a you know commercial arm called Convoy sure. Capital, and we speak with them oh. daily. Um, they're seeing a lot of obviously reductions in the LTVs as well, but a lot of banks are just not lending right now. Yeah, they're so done. The problem, they're like, nope. Yeah, yeah, they're like, we're, we're done with that. And, the, and then the amount of, of lenders, at least from what I'm being told by them, mm -hmm. is that it's significantly less, right? The amount of people in this space. So if you try to put a deal in, it's like they're so backed up because they're the only ones that are even thinking about doing lending right now. And that's just kind of a, you know, macro kind of summary yeah. of what they're seeing in that no, I mean, again, I talk to I talk to big players, right? Anna does deals, big deals. Jonathan does big deals, and and they're like, yeah, this is what's going on. The commercial market is in the first inning of a lot of pain. And commercial, yeah. just for people know, is office, retail, uh, multifamily, uh, mobile home parks. Like there, there's there's going to be lots of pain, and there'll be lots of losses. And again, the the crazy thing to me is. What we're about to see in the commercial market is exactly what caused the, the residential pain in 08, 06, whatever year, was unrealistic assumptions, adjustable rate loans, uh, poor underwriting, and um, yeah, just just compounding bad. So I think commercial, I think commercial for me, I'm actually investing time learning the commercial space because I want to pick up some more assets there, you know, as as stuff reprices and there are fire sales. So I'm I'm excited to to get some bigger stuff personally. I think you said you were going to offload a little bit. Um, I'm going to 1031 out of houses, right? In bigger apartments. Why not? Right. I did it before it worked great. I'm going to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. Uh, what, what are mortgage rates? They got to be down, right? Isn't the 10 year down again today? Let me see. What? Three, four, six or something is my guess. I think I saw it this morning when I woke up, but who knows what it's done in the last, that's actually it's all over. Oh, it's actually up now. The ten years up. Oh wow. Uh, what? Three five three five oh four. But okay. I, I would not have guessed it would be up today. But wow. Well, it's fun. To, funny, not funny, but always interesting to see. Obviously, the uh, spread between the ten and the two has 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 shrunk in, right? Um, and I mean, so we'll just kind of go into our next topic that I'm sure we'll discuss in, in terms of where rates are going. But, yep. you know, yesterday or all this week, um, you're going to see, you know, the conventional players, the Fannie, uh, you know, backed mortgage companies that are selling mostly conventional products or conforming products, their rates, they're, they're going to move a lot quicker. We've said this a bunch, right? Um, when we get notifications in the last two days, I don't, I don't know how many, Reprice worse, reprice better. You know, rates are coming up, rates are going down. I got, but I'm going to take a guess. Just yesterday, I probably got 20 of those. Right, and from that's the not city. normal. No, and and like, they're quicker to move on news. They're they're a little bit more reactionary. Whereas the space that we mainly deal in, right in the non QM side, remember the buyers of these loans are on Wall Street. They are going to be a little bit more cautious. They're going to realize that hey, this is not something that's minute this is not a new trend they're not going to move as quick they're going to sit back and wait to ultimately see you know what are the feds going to do next week it was a uh it was a weird timing for them to be in their blackout period during yeah. you know they, they, they're this. really happy they are yeah um i don't yeah. know your opinion i mean my opinion i i, I think they need to do 0.25 i'd like them to do 0.5 next week because if they if they if they do no rate hike, I think we're in for a, a lot, or the market's going to view that as a lot uh, more trouble than uh, us moving at 0.25. Yeah, I, I actually agree. And I said just as much on the daily financial news this morning, I said, if they do zero, that will crush the market because that will be the sign that there's something else going on that we don't see. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah. there's, um, I, I really don't know. And I always tell my clients right now in this market, look, if you like it, lock it. Cause I think there's still much, there's a much bigger risk of your rate increasing by half a percent than your rate decreasing by half a percent. If you're going to play that game of letting it yeah. flow, yeah. it's just not worth the game. No, if you like it, lock it. I mean, it, one of the things I do in this business is I'm trying to reduce risk. And the biggest thing at that moment is interest rate risk. So yeah, if you like it, lock it. Great advice. This is something I said yesterday. Um, and again, I agree, disagree, as always. Uh, I actually said this, and I, I put it out there as one of those crazy Zuber predictions. 
I said by April 15th, uh, Mortgage Business Daily or Mortgage News Daily, whatever it's called, will be quoting 599 on 30-year mortgages again. In the short term, we're going down. Agreed. Short term, we're going down. Yeah. Um, and then we'll see what happens because a lot of this could be conceived as a Fed pivot. Inflation, could, I mean, there's who knows after that? I just know in the short term, rates are coming down. That's what I think. Yeah, as of right now, as long as there's no... Their things law yeah. crisis sometime between now and when the feds meet next week and give us our our, our uh decision yeah. i agree in the short term we'll, we'll see rates come down but i'm a firm believer that as of right now the feds are going to stick to the fact that they are going to try and fix the inflation problem by they have, to. they have to prove they can walk and chew gum at the same time exactly yeah, yeah there's two problems going on they, they're not only focused on one and i don't know if you saw it this morning but ecb came through with a 50 yeah, your, your bank. Yeah, central bank did that. So that was really cool. So, uh, Credit Suisse, what did they get? Some $60 billion. $50, $54 billion from the central bank of Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So, let's, because I think all the action is not the Fed red increase, because again, I'm 99% sure they're going to give us a quarter. I would have said 100 billion. Next that's, week, that's, a quarter for sure. 99%. Yeah. Nine, yeah. 99. But, I don't know how I feel about May. May's the next meeting. The plot chart's going to be really wild. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> going to be. I So I don't know if you know this, but they actually probably did the dot plot last early last week. I bet they're doing revisions right now. For sure. 100 <laughs> they, have to. they have to, right? Come on. Like, that's oh, true. can I take that back? Can I redo that? <laughs> I need to do I'm, that again. Yeah. It's next Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, we're, we, yeah, I'm losing track of time. Next one, so, so that's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be. We're going to be talking Thursday. So the big question for me is: Is it one and done? We get the dreaded pause. Do we get one two, which is kind of my uneasy call, and then done? Or do they like BlackRock? I mean, I I can't believe BlackRock fell for it last Thursday. BlackRock said they're going to six percent, which I laughed out loud about. I, I don't know, but we'll piggyback off. I don't think I've ever seen the uh, the sentiment or the opinion for the terminal rate to go from, you know, at one point a week ago or a week and a half ago, maybe above six, now four and a half or being at the term. We might be at the terminal rate right now, right? That That's yeah. what people think. And you know, you know what they're calling for the end of the year, right? Have you have you bothered to look that up? up this four? Morning? four, four. They're calling it's it to four. be four. Like how? What? How? Where, where did that come from? It it makes no sense. Like the the amount of change we've seen, it's like I don't know two two hundreds. In some cases, there were some people two weeks ago calling seven right on the terminal what? rate. Yes, three hundred basis point swing in like on the four term. days. No, it's just <laughs> like that's not normal. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. one thing I want to close this out with because it's been kind of a rambling, quite frankly, fun conversation. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. Uh, I want to let you know that a lot of people are sending me notes about Convoy. I've, I think I got three or four just this morning. You guys are helping uh, home buyers buy homes. They're very happy with you uh, and uh, Jonathan. So I wanted to give you that shout out. Uh, but if more people wanted to check out what you guys are doing, how would they reach out? Yeah, you can go to our website, convoyhomeloans.com, and, and just mention that you came from ORAT. That way, John or myself can help you guys out. Yeah, folks, if you don't know, those are the two principles of the company. So please put ORAT so you get those two guys. If you don't put that... You're just going to get some peon and we don't want to work with peons. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you. You got it.